Hello and welcome to another video about hydraulics. Now we're going to talk about pumps. Okay? So this is an absolute necessary thing in a hydraulic system. We need a pump which is pumping the hydraulic liquid through our system. Let's have a look on this. So there is somewhere a pump. Symbol looks like this. There is a clutch, a coupling, or whatever, and there is the motor. We said the motor might be electromotor or combustion engine, depending on if, if it's a mobile hydraulic or stationary hydraulic. That's it. What does a pump do? A pump. Originally, a pump produces flow, okay? So here is a certain flow coming out of this pump. The flow is usually marked with Q or sometimes V point. Basically, there are different types of pumps. Yeah? So uh, there are velocity pumps on one side, yeah? which do somehow work like a ventilator. Yeah? Uh, however, these are not used in, in hydraulics because simply the pressures are too high. Yeah? There we use a displacement pump. Yeah? What things do a displacement pump have? Yeah? Displacement pump has a dipl displacement. <laughs> so there is a certain displacement. What is this displacement? The displacement is actually the amount of your volume which is transferred from one side to the other side when it's done one rotation. Okay? Bump is rotating one time, the shaft of the bump is rotating one time, I get out the displacement volume. It's a volume. It takes, I don't know how many cubic centimeters or cubic decimeters or liters or whatever, one rotation. Okay. Then there is the speed, rotation speed. From the displacement and the rotation speed, because the displacement is what I get out or what I get through yeah, with one rotation, and here rotation speed revisions per minute or whatever, yeah, those two combine, this is usually marked as V, yeah, and this is usually marked with N, those two combine deliver this Q. Okay? If I have a small displacement and have high rotation speed, there is still quite a lot of Q. Mm -hmm. However, you know, the bumps do have limits, of course they have limits. So they're in rotation speed there is a limit, there is usually a lower rotation speed and the upper rotation speed. This is something to do with, with lubrication. A lot of pumps to work with 1, 000, around 1,500 uh, revs by minute because they're usually driven with an asynchronous motor. Yeah? And an asynchronous motor, a usual speed is 1,500. Yeah? Maximum speed is 3,000, yeah? at least in Europe, in North America with the 60 Hz, it's 3,2. Uh, here we have with our 50 Hz we have 3000 and half of it we will hear this in electrotechnic yeah? how ball parts are it's called yeah? uh, how to change the speed and half of the speed is can be done easily so this is a usual speed okay? displacement and rotation speed do deliver the flow okay? and now what to do with this flow yeah? Usually there are then some pipes going somewhere, then there are valves involved somehow. Yeah? And then in the end there are then things like a cylinder, whatever. Yeah? This doesn't really belong to the to the power supply part, but to understand this, okay.
something like this. Huh? Here the flow is rushing in. Yeah? Here I have a force. I want to move with the cylinder something. Yeah? So here I have a force on my cylinder, yeah? at my cylinder. So I need a certain pressure to overcome this force. Yeah? So the pressure is nothing more than the breaking of this, of this flow. Yeah? There's a typical characteristic yeah, typical characteristic of a bump, bump characteristic, looking like this. Yeah. If this is the flow, yeah. this is the pressure P, this is the flow Q, yeah. there's somewhere the flow which we shall have, yeah. the theoretical flow from displacement onto rotation speed. Yeah. However, if we do have here quite a lot of pressure here, P. P. Okay. If we do have quite a lot of pressure here, the typical behavior of a bump is that at no pressure at the other side, so at open end, yeah, we will have the full flow. And the more the pressure is increasing, the lower the flow will get. And at a maximum pressure, we will have a certain flow drop. Okay? That's the leakage. Flow leakage. Here we have a flow leakage. And what remains is the effective flow. Okay? So this is the leakage yeah? and this is the effective flow. Why is this? Why is I mean the displacement is let's say the displacement is, is given, yeah. Why should we lose flow? Where is it going? Well, you know, the bumps, there are moving parts inside, there are standstill parts inside, and between the moving and standstill parts, there are tiny, tiny gaps. Yeah? And so, when we increase the pressure, more oil is rushing through those tiny gaps. Okay? Clear. Yeah? If a small leakage somewhere, yeah? and I have low pressure difference, nothing much will happen. Yeah? If I have big pressure difference, also through a tiny, tiny thing, it will lose a quite amount of, of oil. This is not necessarily a bad thing, yeah? of course, it, but it also is lubricating this bump. Yeah? So it's not possible to make a bump which is lossless. Yeah? A bump will have volumetric losses. That's the volumetric efficiency yeah? of the bump. So I have, I have here power, which is transferred by the pump, mechanical power, which is transferred to the pump to hydraulical power. Yeah? I have two types of efficiency, that's the volumetric efficiency, yeah? how many of my available volume, theoretical volume, I can use, yeah? and then there is also the hydraulic efficiency, mechanic hydraulic efficiency. Both then, we will see both and this gives them the amount of power which is reaching the liquid. By the way, a defect pump here, below here, it looks pretty much the same. And if the pump is then defect, yeah, this pressure loss will simply be, or this, this flow loss will simply be more. Yeah. So this pump, this pump here is okay, and this wrong. Yeah. Because there are simply too many, too many efficiency losses. Yeah? So here we should stay among below 7% of the theoretical flow should be the leakage. Yeah? Otherwise the bump, the wear is too much, simply. Yeah? So here I told something about the maximum pressure, yeah? P max. That's the amount of, of pressure the pump is designed for. So there is also maximum pressure. These maximum pressure values which are given in the data sheets and so on, they are usually peak values. Yeah? 
if we really run in the, during this maximum pressure the whole time, then we will destroy something. Or there's increased wear, let's call it like this. And now, since these are the displacement bumps, they need to bring something from this end to this side. If they're not allowed to, because here it's blocked, then something will get destroyed. The pressure is increasing too much until this flow is dropping to zero. There is somewhere then a leakage. Something will break. This is why we have to use here this pressure relief valve. Okay? This is simply mandatory, absolutely mandatory, to have this inside to protect the pump. Okay? Yeah, so pumps, yeah? pump characteristic. There are also then characteristics, power over pressure and so on, and, and efficiency over pressure. However, this is the most usual one. Yeah? So where is this pressure coming from? There is the outer resistance, yeah? which is coming from outer forces. So here, this thing here, this is called outer resistance. This is simply the thing I want to overcome. Yeah? And then we talked about flow losses and so on. There is a pipe in between and there is streaming and so on. And there are valves. Yeah? They're all resistance, flow resistance. These are called the inner, inner resistance. And both in combination will determine how much pressure there is. Yeah. So flow gives pressure. Pressure is actually a result of the pump pumping. According to this pump uh, diagram characteristic. And if I need a certain amount of pressure, like say, like that. I want to have this pressure because I need it here to lift my weight. Yeah? I will have this flow. And this flow needs to be, in worst case, needs to go over the pressure relief valve. So these are things I need to watch. Okay, I need to watch uh, for my pump. But there are there are more. Yeah? They are the way how they are mounted. Can I mount the pump on my system? Is this possible? There are then also temperatures. How much temperatures is the oil allowed to be? Or also not, not only the temperature, also the characteristic or the liquid. Is my pump allowed to run with this specific liquid or not? There are things for lubrication, in lubrication. These are all things mentioned in the, in the data sheet of the pumps. Okay? There are different pump designs out there. Huh? I show you some of them. I show you some of them. Let's switch to this picture. Yeah? This picture I found on the internet is from Wikipedia. Uh, what we see here is is a gear type pump. Huh? You see, the two gears, they are touching it themselves. Yeah? So here it's sealed, there is no liquid running through. The liquid passes between the teeth to the other side and cannot come back. Yeah? Gear type pump. And this is what I want to mention. This thing here really, really makes a lot of noise. Oh, it also the noise. Yeah. Also, the noise is maybe from interest. Yeah. If you have several gear dial pumps, they make noise. It's incredible. Yeah. There are then other pumps yeah, which somehow work also like the gear dial pumps, but those gears are then not not uh, straight. Yeah. They're screwed. Yeah. Screw dial pumps. Yeah. This is a rotor of a screw dial pump. Yeah. You see then also the flow will be axial. Yeah? The 
will be sucked in here and in these chambers here. Here in the middle it's sealed, the two runners are touching each other and will screw themselves, will screw the oil to the other side. Yeah, screw that part. Much, much silent. They are silent. They just... You can have a huge screw tight pump and a very tiny gear tight pump and the gear tight pump will make noise. It's incredible. So those two pumps I've shown you here, screw tight pump, gear tight pump, they are with constant displacement. Displacement, you know, the amount of volume which is transported at one rotation. Here we can simply see it. Uh, However, there are also pumps out there where the displacement can be adjusted. Okay. Can be adjusted this displacement. One example is the axial piston pump. Uh, looking like this. Uh, this is animation. Uh, here is the suction side. Here those pistons are sucking inside the liquid. This is the entry. Uh, and here is the exit. And here they are pushing out the liquid. Uh, that's the sucking side, the suction side, that's the pressure side. Okay. And with the angle of this sheet, of this washer here, yeah, I can adjust how many, how much is the displacement. If it's in 90 degree, there is no displacement at all. It will just shift around the liquid. Yeah. So there are constructions which can be adjusted. Yeah. Also this type of pump, uh, rotary vane pump. Uh, here there is quite a lot of displacement now, uh, shifted from this side to this side. And if I move this to the middle so that we are concentric, there is no, there is no volume flow at all. Uh, so there are uh, adjustable pumps there. And there are also regulated pumps. So the pump can regulate itself. There can be pressure regulated, there can be flow regulated, there can be power regulated. They will simply adjust the displacement themselves. Yeah. So you see, uh, there are quite a number of pumps out there. I think that's everything I want to say about the pumps. Main thing, main thing is simply to have this, this uh, you have really to watch if it's suitable for your liquid or not. If it's suitable for the pressure, if it's suitable for the heat, it's suitable for the liquid, how much rotation you have because you want to have a certain flow uh, and, what, and then it, that's it. Uh, and then you have a selection of pumps, you take the one which is suiting best to you. Yeah. Like I said, last but not least, there is also the sound of the thing. Yeah, that's it about pumps. Next time, next time we are going to talk about uh, the tank. Okay. Talking, talking. Now we talked about the pump. Now we need somewhere where we put the liquid so that we can pump it out from there. Yeah. And this is the tank. Next time we are going to talk about which tasks the tank. Have, yeah, and what we can do about this. What is inside a tank? Yeah? What are the rules? For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.